Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three. And we are here with an absolute cracker of a match. We do have Strife Crow going up against Freaky soon. And this is already the next group we had. Uh, we covered Group B already today with uh, Xixo and... Xixo and who advanced, Number Guys? <laughs> Xixo and Alesh advanced. <laughs> and Alesh, because Number Guy, who's joining me here for the co-commentating, was also in that group, and unfortunately he was eliminated from the tournament. That, that doesn't matter now. We are happy he's with us, and once again, welcome to the stream. Thank you. I'm so excited to get to cast this match. I think it's going to be a great ma match. Uh, Strive Pro, one of the well-known players. Really high in Gosu Gamers. Freaky, um, pretty well known between pro players, not so known to the community. So um, I definitely think expect high level plays from both players. But Freaky right now is representing Team Darkstar. And uh, the story about Team Darkstar is that everybody now knows Orange. And right after being so successful qualifying for two major tournaments, he just went to Team Arkham. Yeah. So he was. Um, now we were told to join Freaky, but there's no matches going on for me here. So there's nobody to join. They are in the game already. And it looks like we do have some technical difficulties here. Yeah. I, I no, can't join. I Definitely impossible here. Maybe those players, maybe you have to activate in the options that they... Because... Okay. So we will just uh, start a rematch here because something is not working. We cannot spectate. I don't know if you people can see that on the stream, but uh, we we just had some technical difficulties. That's also why we are uh, late in time. We wanted to come back at 8 o'clock now. It's uh, 10 minutes to 9. And the thing was, Blizzard just went down. The, the Hearthstone servers just crashed, something like that. I don't know what was going on. In the meanwhile, we were playing some poker, <laughs> <laughs> making... Making some money. Yeah, we can join. We, I, I can join. I can. Oh, I can join. S yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I can. Okay. I can join Freaky as well, and we are jumping right into the game. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, prepare to see Freaky on the Druid going up against a Strife Crow here on the Warrior. Yeah, definitely a matchup that heavily favors uh, Freaky. He definitely got the matchup he wanted. Um, Druid is like maybe 80% against Warrior. Um, of course, depending on if you what kind of Druid deck you have. If you have the Black Knight or if you have the Harrison Jones, it increases the Druid chances of winning a lot. Yeah, but still, I would say between combo and ramp, uh, the combo Druid is heavily favored against against the Warrior. The ramp Druid not so much, but also still slightly favored. But yeah. on the other hand, we see Strife Crow here with the starting hand. He already has the Harrison Jones in hand. And that's not a card that you want against the Druid. No, definitely not. It's a more or less a dead card against Druid, unless they play Blanktron, but I haven't seen any list like that so far. Um. Freaky also goes for a coin into in, uh, into White Grove turn 1 and has a turn 3 follow-up there with the Shade of Next Ramas. Maybe turn 4, if he does not draw into Shredder or something he wants to play, he will just uh, play set the, the second, second Shade. shade. Yeah. Because it's really nice. Those shades, we say it so often, we say it all the time. Those shades are really bad to deal with for the Warrior. There's yeah. no real way other than the Brawl. The Brawl is like Brawl. the only way you have to deal with the the shades. Or Double Whirlwind or Baron Geddon if it's early on. But uh, Baron Geddon if it's early on for the Warrior? Yeah, <laughs> if it's early on for the shade, you know? If yeah. they play a shade, you can count, like in late game, you can counter with the Baron Geddon right away. Um, Unfortunately, we can see here for Strife Code that that won't be the case, since I'm pretty sure that the second shade is going to come down here and uh, Frigga is just going to pass the turn back to Strife Crow. I definitely expect to see really that. doesn't have a lot of good turn 4 plays here. Oh, but he gets Well, the he draws death into <laughs> the Death Spite. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Strife Crow here, a bit lucky, but anyway, uh, you can play that, but... Turn 5 is upcoming for the Druid, and some Druids play Harrison Jones, so do you want to play that uh, Death Spite here on turn 4? And if you do, do you attack with it, or do you keep the two charges of the weapon? That's the big question here for me. I think you're definitely playing it, but I think if you're playing it, you're attacking. Like, he doesn't have any other play. His The alternative would be to play an Acolyte and pass, which I think is way too passively. If the Warrior just plays passive, the Druid is gonna stomp him, so... Definitely, I think he has to play the Death Spite, try to go for some face damage. 
But as you already said, a Strife Grow, a very experienced player. I've also seen him play a lot of Warrior in tournaments, starting with uh, early in the beta he already played Warrior a lot. And Strife Grow is a very experienced Warrior player, and so he will figure out what's the best move to do here. And he's roping, he's taking his time, and he favors the Death Spite because of the reasons you mentioned. And swings to the face. Yeah, I mean, like, you can't not swing with the face, and I don't think you, there's any alternative to playing the Death Spite. Um, I would expect Frigga to go for the low fab here. I think it's pretty clear low fab. You can kill the armor smith, kill some of the armor. It makes the turn really awkward for the warrior. Um, obviously, the disadvantage of playing low fab is that he will kill it right away with the Death Spite. But I mean, like, I don't think you can pass up on this low fab. You can activate both the shades. If you pass up on low fab here and do nothing, hero power face, or even maybe wrath the armor smith and hero power it, then you're just in, ca in risk of getting brawled, which would be absolutely devastating. And now this was the turn for Xixo to reveal both of his shades. And now Strifegrow has uh, the possibility to clear them in the future. And... Still, there is not a nice turn here for, for Strife Crow. Well, I mean, he can't I mean, even like play the, the Acolyte now. and then attack into the low fab is pretty nice, I would say. Uh, obviously, it's far from ideal, but I think it's the best play. The other play you can go for is the slightly more aggressive with the Harrison Jones, which I definitely don't hate. Really? But then that Harrison Jones is easily traded away by the 4 4 shade. But you need to put down something. If you don't put down something, yeah, you're I just would go for the acolyte. You need to draw into something. Maybe you draw for a following turn. You draw that execute. So that would be very nice. <laughs> and maybe one more thing about the stream: if you're uh, using your mouse on the stream, people can just see what's on my screen. So if you want to hover over something or show something, because I've seen you're very acti active oh. with the mouse, people can just see what's on my screen, just uh, to let you know. But anyway, strife grow. Goes for the Acolyte of Pain. Which I like. Um, he wanna draw into a brawl right here. And um, he takes out the Shade of Next Ramas. Yeah, because the Shade was gonna grow anyway. Um, so I think it's pretty clear. Now the question is, do we wanna play the Fire Roax or armor up? And he does choose to go for the Fire Roax. Um, which I, again, can't really fault him for. It's not like he has a play next turn, but... You might as well just equip it right now. The question here for Freaky now is, um, do you play the Keeper of the Grove or do you take out the Acolyte of Pain right away with the Wrath? You could also go for the Silence and then Wrath deny your opponent another card draw. You could also go just deal two damage with the Keeper of the Grove and go to the face to deal some additional damage. I think you definitely go for the Silence here. Um, I'm a big fan of Silent Acolytes of Pain. One of the ways you win this matchup is that the Warrior will run out of out of cards and uh, you won't. So. Um, but the thing is, as we look uh, on Freaky's hand here, uh, he has to draw into something, something he can that stays on the board. Because with all those spells lining up in his hand, uh, there's no real answer to keep the pressure high here. I'm a little bit surprised that he choose to wrath for three instead of for one. I think I would have wrathed for one. Uh, I don't think the one one acolyte makes that much of a difference. But um, but anyway, I can't fault him for it too much. It's nice to have a clean board. Um, we are still one turn away from the famous Amosmith Smith brawl, um, which is definitely something Frege will have to be aware of. Yeah, but for now, Strife Guru has an awkward turn, and his only play on this turn six is a Harrison Jones that comes on the board as a five four vanilla. And he's dropping pretty low. He's on 16 HP already. And we do see a swipe in the hand of Ricky here. And we also have a Force of Nature. So potential 13 damage coming in this turn with the Force of Nature. Uh, but I suggest uh, to go for the Piloted Shredder here. Uh, I actually don't think I would go for the Piloted Shredder. Um, would you I swipe? Yeah, I think I would just Jones? go for the swipe, keep under pressure. You get to push for 9 damage to the face, you put the warrior down to 7. It sets up lethal with the force of nature next turn, even if the board gets cleared. Um, so I think I would just swipe here, hero power, 
um, take away your opponent. It doesn't play. It also plays around brawl in case. Oh, he even swipes the face to increase the damage, and then uses his wrath to take out the Harrison Jones. Then goes to the face for another seven damage, leaving Strife Crow on just five HP, and that even more sets up Lethal nicely. Yeah. Because now, even if he uses his armor up, he's in lethal range with Force of Nature and the Shapeshift. Exactly. I really like that play from Freke. I think he really. Um, anticipates the situation correctly, he sees his fire head, he sees he can set up lethal, and he knows there's nothing the warrior can do. It n it's not like the we are on turn 9 and the warrior can play Alex Strauss and anything. So, um, definitely like the play from Strife Frigga Crow here. goes for a desperation move, he uses double shield slam to take out one minion to take out the Lilith up here, and swings to the face, but as we know with the force of nature, it will be lethal damage here, represented by Fricky. And he even draws into Savannah's, but that doesn't matter. We see the well played. Force of Nature comes out. Yeah, and Frigge, much as expected, takes game one here. I mean, like, he's heavily favored. Honestly, I think Druid is so strong at this moment uh, that uh, you are going to win with Druid if you bring Druid uh, at some point, so. Yeah, in a best of five, definitely. In a best of three, I wouldn't be so sure uh, because the Druid sure. also has some chances of losing. But I discussed it with Twitch, uh, with Twitch, <laughs> with Nimsh earlier today. Uh, so uh, that Druid has a nice win rate against everything. You can bring Druid against nearly everything. Yeah. And it's always not that you have a matchup like it's when you bring a rogue and you're running into warrior. You're like, <laughs> okay, 95% uh, I'm losing this game. Yeah. And uh, that's not the case with Druid. Because if you bring Druid, you have a really nice chance just to win some of the games in a best of five that exactly. the Druid gets the win is very likely. That's why I like to save my Druid for last. Um, because if you save your Druid for last, then you will have it and they will have a decent chance against any deck that's left. Um, but I mean, like, he picked it up first, got a very favorable matchup and they're easy win. So definitely can't fault him for that. Now we see Freaky playing his mage, going up against uh, Strifegrow once more on the Warrior. Yeah, Strifegrow sticks with the Warrior. Um, I think that's a pretty interesting decision. Yeah, uh, Freaky had mage and rogue left. So uh, I, thi I think Strifegrow wanted to punish Freaky for picking the rogue, but yeah. it didn't really work out. But I mean, like, uh, essentially, um, Warrior also does pretty well against uh, Mage. So against I that kind of Tempo Mage, it does, but not against Mech Mage. Against Mech Mage, Warrior is pretty unfavored. Uh, that's that's true. Like, yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, but I think almost all the European player players favors the Tempo Mage nowadays over the the Mech Mage. Um, so I'm not surprised that Strifegrow might have made a read saying it's Temple Mage, I'm gonna play Warrior again. But look at that, Freaky plays the Water Elemental in his version of the of the Temple Mage and already the Flame Cannon is also a nice card for the early game here to deal with an Acolyte of Pain, to deal with the Armor Smith. And uh, there we go, Strifegrow plays his Armor Smith already. And Freaky might follow that up with the Flame Cannon already, or just play the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Uh, the Flame Cannon I seems pretty good to me here. I think the Flame Cannon seems pretty good here. Um, it clears out the armor Smith. you don't give him too much armor. Not really that you worry about his armor in this matchup, I would say. Uh, it's one of the matchups where you're gonna win if you have the Temple, you're not gonna win by drawing some weird kind of burst combination. Um, So here I would like to see the, the warrior player just armor up, take it nice and slow. Uh, the, if you're the warrior player, there's no reason to rush the matchup, you have all the time in the world. Well, um, turn two, you never play a 2-2 two -two <laughs> vanilla cruel taskmaster. No, I, I don't think I've ever seen that. Maybe against... Nah, I, I don't think you would ever do that. But still interesting to see here, Strife Crow takes his time, yeah, maybe he's you, planning you know, out the next maybe turns. He's, or maybe he's like bluffing the fire war axes. Maybe that some could be mind games options, going on. You know, uh, like, it can definitely never hurt to take your time, no matter what. Um, oh, it can hurt. You know, when you're <laughs> facing that one guy in the tournament and he's always roping, and usually it's life coach, <laughs> but there are also <laughs> other players who are just doing that and they're always roping, like, turn one roping, what the heck? Yeah, I mean, like, Aless was writing down all the cards I played and all the cards he played, you know? Yeah. That's also gonna take some time, but... Uh, I just trust my memory, but... 
It sometimes didn't work out for me. Sometimes in some matches I forgot an owl because I didn't remember was it two owls. But uh, writing down is definitely a good a good thing to do here and taking yeah, the time. Um, I got myself used to not writing down since it was forbidden at BlizzCon. Uh, I used to always write everything down, but since it was forbidden to at BlizzCon, I um, I practiced not writing anything down, and, and um, now I'm just now I don't, just don't need it. Okay, so here at turn 4, I would like to see the Shredder or the Water Elemental, since the Water Elemental can get Cruel Taskmaster executed. However, if he doesn't have, if you play the Water Elemental and he doesn't have that Cruel Taskmaster execute, it's also, uh, you also gain a lot more. Yeah, but he did draw into the Execute and he also has the Death Spite in his hand, so Strife Crow is dealing with that Piloted Shredder. A Stone Splinter Drog is what comes out. And we do have a nice uh, turn 5 follow-up here, if uh, if Freaky wants to. He could play the Azur Drake, he could also go for the Water Elemental and just freeze the face here with his yeah. Frostbolt, that's also an option. I've, I wouldn't fault him from playing the Azur Drake, but the Azur Drake also plays really heavily into the um, into the Death Spite. So maybe, and if you play the Water Elemental, you pretty much has to Frostbolt. Um, so I think I would go for the Water Elemental and the Frostbolt play. Uh, I like to play aggressive, um, I think that's when you beat Warrior mo more often, that's when you play aggressive, so I um, definitely like this line of play from uh, from Frigga here. Yeah, and there he goes, Frostbolt into the face of Strife Grow. Go to the face with the Splinter Strone Drog and uh, the the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And Strife Grow, he has a Brawl in hand, so you could think about a turn 5 Brawl, because he might have found out that uh, Freaky is bringing uh, the Tempo Mage to the table, so you could think about that Brawl, you could also play it safe. Keeping the Brawl is maybe a bit safer, because you never know what comes. You could the also problem is, if you keep the Brawl here, what, what play would you suggest? Because either you have to Cruel Taskmaster execute something, which feels pretty bad. It does it? It, it feels pretty good to me. You take out the Water Elemental, you got your weapon available next turn, you armor up a bit, so you're taking th uh, 3 damage just from the from the Sorcerer's Apprentice, if you want to see it like that, and you got your weapon available next turn already, and you don't risk, because if the Water Elemental stays, that's devastating for you. Yeah, and definitely. Drive Crow uh, goes for the safe play here. That's always a thing I forget about. Buffing up that Stone Splinter uh, truck, it does not really matter here, I guess, but now it's a 3-3, not a 2-3 anymore. But you know, now it's turn 6, and you know what card comes on turn 6? Truck, so... Troxor? Yeah, I've definitely... F oh, no, what... Thorazan. You Thorazan? mean the Emperor? Yeah, the Emperor, the Emperor Thorazan. Yeah, the King of Queens. Um, it's uh, Thorazan yeah. here. He so looks so ugly. I would definitely like to see uh, Freaky play Thorazan here. Um, then sacrifice his true run into the 2-2. Two -two. Uh, and then play the first, and, and it looks like that's the play he's I going totally with. agree to that play, and uh, it's a good thing Strife Pro kept the brawl because next turn we might already see a four mana Azur Drake into a one mana Sorcerer's Apprentice and a one mana Mad Scientist, and then that brawl would come crushing. Yeah, um, I think if you're Strife Crow here, you probably want to go for the Sylvanas. I would also play the Sylvanas here. You want to gain some tempo back if you want. If he needs to sacrifice his um, his uh, truck and then uh, frostbolt it, then you're actually pretty happy with it. It's uh, a loss of tempo for the mage. Uh, the mage is in a position where he wants to go face a return if possible. He really doesn't want to trade unless he absolutely have to. So. Um, I like the Sylvanas play here. Can you explain Toshley to me? I have seen it recently in those Tempo Majors, but I don't really get the use of Toshley. I don't know. Uh, it also strikes me as pretty weird. I know a lot of people who place it in Mech Mates because of the spare parts. I guess you could kind of use the same argument for playing it in the Tempo Mates. It's a pretty strong body. It's a 5 7, which is a body a Tempo deck definitely want to have. Um, but I feel like 
there isn't too much spare parts in it yet. But if you have Antonidas in your deck, you definitely have some kind of spare parts. Yeah, but usually those Temple Mages don't even play Antonidas and there are no more real slots True. for that other than maybe an unstable portal or something like that. There's a combination with the Sorcerer's Apprentice, you can play those uh, spare parts for free. But I doubt that Toshley is better than a Sylvanas because it's a slot yeah. on... It's a six mana slot that is just blocked by Toshley. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not really a big fan of Tusley as well. Uh, I didn't bring him to this tournament, but definitely an interesting uh, decision, yeah. I think it's a pretty clear brawl this turn, however, for Strife Crow. Um, you can attack face with the Sylvanas, sprawl, armor up. Um, I actually don't see any other play. Me neither. So, there we go. He attacks to the face, he goes for the brawl. And what does he get? It doesn't really matter what he gets. All of them is pretty good outcomes. Actually, Whoa! that's the no, best No, it does outcome. matter. It does matter, uh, but there is the Fireball as an answer to that. But if Fireball goes on Sylvanas, that means Fireball doesn't go on your face, which I would be pretty happy with. That's um, a good thing. And Strife Girl has a lot of armor up next turn. He has the shield block in hand, and but he also the thing has is the shield made. The, um, the mirror entities that the mage has available right now, um, is definitely going to be really annoying for the warrior. Totally. So that was what I thought about. Maybe you want uh, the mad scientist to survive in order to not have that mirror entity out. But That's true, but the mad scientist is also a weaker body. It's a weaker body, but you want to play your legendaries. As a, as a warrior, you have all of those big legendaries and you want to play them sooner or later. And uh, that mirror entity is pretty strong in the late game against the warrior. I mean, like, if Strifeco uh, tap decks the um, Amos Smith right here, it would be absolutely amazing. Um, otherwise, it would be absolutely he amazing. You're calling it. Let us see what he draws. A shield slam would be pretty good as well because you could uh, shield maiden and then shield slam your Both opponent. Both shield slams so are gone. They were used on a low step, I guess. No, no. It Oh, one, that was last turn. That gone. was last. <laughs> it was last game where yeah. he used to. I'm pretty sure only one shield slam has gone this game. Oh, um, your memory works actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think uh, I would go for the shield maiden and the shield slam on the opponent's shield maiden here. Also, there is always the chance that it's actually not a mirror entity because some of these tempo mages is running. Um, Counter spell. Yeah, so most of them, uh, I think uh, nearly every one of them runs at least one counter spell. Yeah. I know uh, the version of Millennium, they run even two. Yeah. And Some also want Duplicate, which like would be pretty devastating. But still, you can check for it with the Shield Man. Playing yeah, the exactly. Shield Man is always safe, Definitely. and then you don't even have to go for the Shield Slam if it's no mirror entity. Exactly. But like this, you are maybe. I would go for the Shield Slam here. He ups. He's thinking about the Fire War Axe here, what which is definitely what I would do if it wasn't Mirror Entity, but now where Mirror Entity came down, I think... Well, you can keep your Shield Slam to deal with something like Dr. Boom. Or the Tusley that we or the Tusley know that Frigga have in I, I hope they don't hear us, but there Are we go. Well, you can tell me because you was you were playing yourself. He is playing the Archmates. Do you hear? Do you hear the casters when you're playing there as a player? No, of course not. Of that course would not. be cheating. That would know? be cheating. No, I'm uh, just asking. And no, he the headset is pretty good. He does so. play Antonidas as as you expected. Yeah. Really. So I would say the Tusli makes some sort of sense if you play Antonidas. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, gets the freezing spell part, which is definitely not a bad spell part in the current situation. Um, yeah, I can use that spell part to freeze the shield maiden, which is. He could use huge. it right away, but I guess you want to trigger Archmage and Tinnitus with that. So, giving that emergency coolant away here doesn't really feel right, or does it? I mean, you're gonna get another spell part of the Tushley, so it has I've to die first, and I it, it's true. I, I wouldn't feel so bad. I think uh, using the emergency coolant on a five-five is, at this point, very critical. You have a Temple lead, you want to keep your temple lead. The but way you're going to lose against Roya is not by having. Well, I guess five he doesn't play balls. it now because otherwise it was a mistake to attack with the mana yeah. worm here, but he values it more to trigger Antonidas, and so Freaky agrees with me. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um. 
And Strifer, on the other hand, goes for Shield Block and almost up to 18 HP again. Has now six mana available. Double Fiery War Axe, that's not what you want in the late game. No. Both blocking slots in his hand. And also that Cruel Taskmaster is not really helping uh, is not really helping him out here. Yeah, I think you have to go for the Cruel Taskmaster on the Shield Maiden. And then Fiery War Axe, the one of the opponent's two creatures. I'm thinking which one to go for. I don't really think it matters too I would, much. I would go for uh, for the Sorcerer's Apprentice and it matters a lot. Because if you see Toshle... You and know you your think opponent has two spare parts, so the mana worm is going to grow to a 3-3 tree tree anyway. Yeah, but if he plays Toshle, you might expect the same that you did. You might expect an Art Mage and Tinnitus. But and if you expect that... But for the mage player to have it in his hand as well, the mage player has one real card in his That's hand. That's the question. For it Do to you be Antonidas is so but unlucky. But it would be devastating if you leave that on board. And just a 3-3 mana worm is not really disturbing you too much. So the threat is uh, is calculatable. But if the Antonidas comes down and you can play three spells with that... But he can play... Spell. Oh, I guess he can play the fireball now. So you're yeah, you can play the fireball this turn yeah. already. So you're definitely losing some damage here. And I, I totally agree to Strife Grow's play here. And now he plays his spare parts with the emergency coolant. He gets the three-three mana worm, but I don't think that's uh, too important here. He can even bring it out of range for for the fiery war axe. Wow. Yeah, I mean like for Frigga having the. The Toshley into Antonidas, you know, it really doesn't happen that often. Yeah. So I think he's got to feel a little bit pleased about his uh, his draws here. But um, yeah, Freaky definitely pretty lucky here, and Strifegrow unlucky drawing into that Acolyte of Pain, another early game card here. You wanted to see something like maybe Ragnaros could have helped you to take out that take out that Archmage and Tinnitus. You wanted to see some, uh, something like a Shield Slam or an Execute, but that Acolyte is not really helping him. And like that, Strife Crow concedes. He knows he is... Uh, he is dead. There's nothing he can do. That's it. And like that, Freaky wins with the Mage as well. So he's yeah, going, going up 2-0 uh, against Strife Crow. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, I didn't expect Freaky to go up here. I was <laughs> expecting Strife Crow to be the favorite. I mean, like, Frigga, he's not that well-known for, uh, for the community, but between pro players, he's, he's really well-known. Um, and uh, in Hearthstone, ev everyone can trio everyone. Um, I don't think we're going to see a trio here, because I think Strafko is going to play his Warrior once again, and Frigga is going to play his Rogue, which is a very unfavorable matchup. We talked about it earlier. Most Rogue decks. Yeah. Totally. So Freaky left with the rogue, but also he's going up against the warlock and the paladin, and that are two favorable matchups for the rogue. So Freaky might, in the end, get the victory. It might not be a, f a clean sweep with the 3 0, but I first of all. It might depend on what kind of warlock deck uh, Strafko is bringing, but definitely rogue is fair against paladin. Uh, but, uh, you know. Well, Rogue is pretty good against Demon Look, Rogue is very good against Zoo, and Rogue is also, well, pretty if you too very good the, against... the Handlock version with Mountain Giants, you can put a lot of pressure. Yeah, you can. But, but I don't think Strifecrow is playing that list. Uh, he has played a lot of the list with the white... Uh, white the Strifecrow was the one who invented the list with the uh, Dread Infernals and the Molten Giants. Yeah, so... Um, and the Malganus. Um. And the so Malganus? What? Malganus. Isn't Malganus in every demon lock? Uh, yeah, it's in every demon lock, but I play a warlock list without Malganus. Okay. Uh, without all the demon synergy and just with Molden Dines, like the Ooh. hand lock. So. Listen to that. Some, some crazy stuff going on here with Number Guy. It's definitely great. But we are ready here with with the third game of this best of five series. And Freaky has the Edwin Van Cleave, he has the Violet Teacher, SI7 agent, and what's bad for him here is he has double backstab. Yeah, double backstab is definitely not the the thing you're looking for in this matchup. Um But I mean like it's okay, he can uh he can dagger up here, and then next turn he can go for the backstab SI agent. Uh, he has some minions, he has the Edwin. Edwin can be a way to win this matchup. Sometimes you feel like you're in such a bad shape, you just go for a very big Edwin, and uh, can definitely be a way to, to yeah, win the but matchup. But also for, for the warrior, there's so much removal. Oh, he even goes for it. Wow, that's this. 
very aggressive going for backstep into coin into SI7 agent. Yeah, really aggressive. Um, I wonder why. Uh, yeah. I would probably have favor to, to save the coin here. Um, just dagger up because you are going to need to dagger up eventually. Um, so why is he choosing to play that? Maybe uh, this play is good against an Acolyte of Pain coming down now. That is true. It is good to Acolyte of Pain. Um, but you stop the pressure from coming by making this play this turn because now now you're not just going to deck up. Yeah, he's just he just screwed up his curve. Yeah. Um, like you can't backstab something <laughs> and play Edwin. And like there was nothing the Warrior player could play that you would have been able to backstab. Um, so a little bit of... Uh, Weird play, but um, yeah. And next turn, I expect to see uh, the death spite coming down. And once you attack I with think, the uh, death spite, the, the fire raw axe would be better here. Really, going into turn four, where possibly a violet teacher might come on the board. I would always go for a turn four death spite here. But it's like if you play the death spite and he plays another tree drop, it's also. Well, strife grow agrees once more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm know. just kidding. I'm um, just kidding. I mean, like, because now he's definitely not gonna play the Violet Teacher, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, but this screws up his whole turn, so now he does not have a good play. He can just attack to the face and dagger up once again. He can you can just play a 2-2 two -two Edwin. You play a 2-2 two -two Edwin here? Maybe, like... Really? No wonder that you're out of the tournament <laughs> already. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, like, the Rogue is in such a bad spot here. I wouldn't... You would escape Concede? <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't Come escape on, be concede. Honest. Be no. honest, please. <laughs> Maybe on ladder I would escape concede. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't play this deck on ladder, so... You're not a fan of Rogue? Oh, I'm a big fan of Rogue. Um, I brought a very special Rogue deck to this tournament. Unfortunately, I never got to play it, so... Did you have it in your lineup? Uh, no, I had, I had it in my five deck lineup. Oh, in your oh, so it was the fifth deck that yeah. was not taken to the tournament. Okay, unfortunately, we didn't see that. No. I always love to see interesting decks. Anyway, he does not go for the 2-2, Fan Cleave. He thinks that's a bit too crazy today, but maybe we will see it uh, soon. <laughs> I don't maybe. know. <laughs> and Strifegrow goes for the shield block here. And he draws the armor smith, which might come down right away. Um. Yeah, definitely a good play. No reason here to use the hero ability. Armor smith for some board presence at least. It's just a 1-4, but it's some presence. And Freaky, on the other hand, draws into a sprint, but without a preparation, that's uh, another useless draw here for him. And he now has to think about what do I do this turn? Yeah. <laughs> Zap the Armor Smith play 4 4 Fan Cleave? That's not really better here. No, the 4 4 also plays into the Death Spite. Um, maybe you could go for the Violet Teacher, a backstab, and dagger into the Armor Smith. That way, when he attacks the Violet Teacher with the Death Spite, at least the Armor Smith is. Smith is gonna die, but I mean, like, overall, Friggy is just in such a bad position right now. It's really hard to make any good plays at this point. And with that, uh, with that trade, you would allow Strife Crow another three armor at least. Definitely. And but he's already on 35 HP, and as a rogue, sometimes you're running out of steam as the rogue. And once that happens, usually the warrior is just gonna sit there and with his armor, and he's saying, okay, I'm Strife Crow, I'm a warrior, and I can wait until, until Christmas Eve. Yeah, also, um, Warrior has Dr. Boom, which is one of the key cards in this matchup. It's like you play it, your opponent... It's so hard for Rogue to remove Dr. Boom. Like, if it wouldn't be for Dr. Boom, I think Rogue would be even more dominant than this right here. He goes for the Tinker's Sharp Sword, or at least maybe taking out the Armor Smith. There you go, swinging on that. Little Lady says bye-bye, and the Strife Crow draws into the Big Game Hunter. So if we see a big Edwin van Cleef coming soon, and that might probably be taken out by that big game hunter. But for now it's turn six, and why don't you go for that Sylvanas? That's at least what I would do. I don't see any reason not to go to, for the Sylvanas. I mean, like, it's a 5-5 five, five in turn six. Um, I'm so glad you agree to that. <laughs> obviously, you would rather have had, like, the Emperor, but... Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's never good it. enough for Number Guy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no Number Guy is never <laughs> satisfied with the cards that are available here in Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, well, this turn, uh, you have to zap it back up, right? You have to play one while the teacher now and then... Or do you want to take it out with the backstab? You could either go for the 
Back uh, everything is so bad. Yeah, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's hard to cast yeah, to cast uh, those games where everything is just going down, and you know since turn three that Freaky does just not have a chance against that warrior here, and uh, we are still staying here with Freaky because we have also seen some freaking games. <laughs> 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 Hashtag <Puns>. bad jokes. <laughs> we have seen some freaking games where it was in the end still possible to turn it around. I can't see that here, but. Hearthstone is a crazy game, and uh, if you just pray to RNGs long enough, it sometimes rewards you. Sometimes it does, and you know, sometimes you get nothing. Um, again, or sometimes you get a Dr. Boom against you. Yeah, again, this was what I talked about, Rogue having such a hard time. You don't want to sap Dr. Boom. Uh, Killing it, you, you can kill it, you can kill it with the backstab and the SI agent. If you go for that play, you're definitely going to play the Violet Teacher first. Make a bunch of 1-1s, one hope that these 1-1s one will absorb the boom bots. Um, but again, you're just not in a good spot. But I think that's the play he's going to go for, uh, taking 7 damage. Um, not that Rogue is too worried about his health, um, it's more of like a surviving game for the Warrior player. Um, but again, even though you do take a little bit of ball control back, it's not a good spot to be in. I totally agree with you. It's definitely... He also swings first, then goes for the SI7 agent. Kind of surprising coming out <laughs> of the hand here. And yeah, he's left with quite a board, but we also see the Gore Howl here in Strifegrow's hand. So he could go for that if he wanted to. He does not rely on lucky bombs. He could take out that uh, Violet Teacher then uh, maybe you get a lucky bomb, you trade into that Violet Apprentice and maybe hit for exactly 3 on that SI7 agent. 4 would not be cool because you, we want to have it clean and... You know. <laughs> I so. think you would be happy with any result at this <laughs> Yeah, point. I guess Drivegrow um, really doesn't care here. <laughs> but yeah, as you said, and as expected, the Gohal is coming down here. Totally agree with that. Um, the Boombats, what will it be? Hit for three! Face. Oh, that was so nice by you. What will it be? Hit for three. Oh my <laughs> god. Ladies and gentlemen, we are rhyming with MC Number Guy. <laughs> so I think the Rogue has to sprint here. Um, Sabbing is obviously not um, an option. Eviscerating for two is not an option. So yeah, he agrees. He goes for the sprint here. Filling back his hand a little bit, but then again, he's at 18 and the Warrior is still set. Staying pretty comfortable at 30. 30 HP against a rogue on turn 8, that's crazy. It's just such a good job here. Yeah, and even there's no real follow up here for Freaky, and this game is just painful to watch. I have to admit, it's just yeah. painful to so watch. So, my question is here do you attack the 3 3 to face or to the 1 1? I mean, like, you could kill the 1-1, one -one, but the bomb might hit your SI agent, which would be really bad. Yeah, but I, uh, somehow I feel like you can't allow that bomb on the board. Whoa! Oh. How lucky! How lucky! But it does all not matter! It does all not matter. He can hit for a 100 mm. on that SI7 agent. It's, it's still gonna die. Yeah, it's still gonna die. Yeah, that as well. And Strifegro is still gonna win. I'm... And as you see, Strife Crew picks up the Harrison Jones as well, another card that even if somehow the uh, Rogue managed to get a big weapon, um, he would need to blade throw it away right away. Right now, Freaky has eight cards in his hand, so he could also go for preparation into Sprint, uh, filling his hand up to ten cards and then having some options maybe. Well, then you have your... But, but what do you hope to draw into? Nothing. <laughs> into the conceit. The, the, problem is <laughs> the problem isn't that the, with the rogue's options, the rogue has plenty of options. The problem is that no matter what option you pick, you're more or less in a bad spot. Yeah, that's the um, thing, but for me it sometimes feels better just to draw. Maybe you draw some druid cards or something like that. <laughs> but there are really no options. I, I think he's gonna go for, for Loath up here in the pilot. I'd rather just put as much on the board as possible. Yeah, I definitely uh, don't hate this. Another option, uh, as I talked about earlier, is to go for Giant Van Cleef. There would be a turn where you could make a Giant Van Cleef. Of course, we know as the casters, the big game humber would come down, but some players might would have seen it as their only way to uh, win the game. That's it, but we haven't seen one execute being played, so both executes are available, and you can really uh, think that this big Advent Van Cleef would not survive for long. 
And Stripegro putting on even more pressure with that Isera as it looks. He hovers over it, and there we go. Yeah. I mean, like, there's still one sap left, but if you use the saps on the Isera instead of a, instead of a Belcia, you're definitely a, a heavy Stripegro. And he chooses not to trade into the pilot sweater. Of there's no reason. He's healthy and he can put on the pressure now. He is the one to set up lethal. I mean, like, at 27, are you really that healthy? Yes. What about if he daggered up, prepped a Tenga, played a second Tenga, that's seven mana, sat and uh, played a deadly poison? That would be like... Uh, There's not even eno enough mana for yeah, that's exactly a blade ten. flurry. No, that, that would be exactly ten mana. Um, yeah, and that's not even lethal. No, it would be 19 damage, so... Um, I, I guess you're right, It's uh, it would still be off. Um. And, well, even though Freaky did draw a lot of cards, so that play that you mentioned is not even too unlikely, but as Strifegrow, I would just like to, to close the game out as soon as possible, and that's why I would put on the pressure here. Yeah, I think it's definitely fine to pull out the pressure. Um. We can also see that if Frigga had gone for such kind of play, um, he would immediately have been uh, punished by, uh, by Strife Coast Nightmare. Um, so Frigga ends up stabbing the Acera, um, and yeah, and eviscerating that guy. Did he rope? I don't know. Did, did everything no. come, thr uh, come through? We'll find out quickly. Oh, the slime is left on the board, and that's. Uh, Little bit of a misplay. That's but again, lethal. That's it lethal with matter. the nightmare here. Yeah. So there we go. Swing in with a six-seven slime. Also good to see that. And then Strife go goes up. Th uh, two one is it now? That's yeah. the score between the two players. Strife Girl manages to win that very favorable matchup. We have to say it's like what do you say? The win rate is it ninety-five to five or is it ninety to ten? Uh, with the exact build that Frick is playing, it's probably uh, around ninety, maybe a little bit above ninety. Um, just really bad matchup. Yeah, a very bad matchup, and so, so. Strifegrow has the Warlock and the Paladin left, as we know, and he will go up against the Rogue, that is the only class left here for Freaky. And you said you would go for the Warlock. I would definitely snap pick the Warlock. I think the Warlock has a better chance uh, than the Paladin, so at least you get a play 2-2 two -two before, and you might be able to it set... It looks better. <laughs> no, you might be able to set Fricky on a little bit of tilt, you know, yeah. some players get very emotional and the downswing can really uh, can yeah, really maybe do As we play. pointed out, the more experienced player when it comes to offline events, so he's maybe the one who can deal with that pressure better than Freaky. so putting him into that bad spot, having a 2-2 two -two in the last game, deciding even though it looks better from the matchup here uh, for, for Freaky maybe, uh, it's a nice mind game that uh, Strife Grow is maybe doing. So because uh, some people also think in online tournaments maybe okay, it comes down to the Paladin, so I have to play the unfavorable matchup first, and then I can go to bed or something like that. Some people definitely goes for that. Um, I don't know. I like to have the momentum. I like to be on a winning spree. I think if you won the last game, you are more likely to play well in the next game. Yeah, and definitely you were also doing a great job today. It's <laughs> it's very unfortunate that we don't see you tomorrow here, but you had some crazy games and you you really played that out well. And you, you can't you can't blame your skill here. No, I mean like it's take Tech TV has made an amazing tournament here. Seed Story Cup has amazing 32 players. Everyone is super good. Uh, it's Hearthstone, so obviously there's a big element of luck um, and. Um, Overall, I just think that uh, that I didn't really have the draws, and you know, it doesn't really matter too much. You know, great players uh, all around, so I don't think there's any shame in coming here and losing. It's uh, yeah, totally. It's it's a great job to be here. You you were invited. I I, uh, I was just losing to Oscarka in the finals of the qualification cup, but now I'm here casting, so I'm also having fun. And yeah, we are seeing the warlock being played here by Strifecrow, and it's. Well, we see the Molten Giants, and you said those are the cards that change this this outcome of the game. You said they are very important going up against a rogue. But 
In yeah. my opinion, you also pointed it out last game. There's a turn for a rogue when when the rogue has so much burst, like 15 to 19 burst in a turn, and that's sometimes when the warlock never gets to play his molten giants. Yeah, I think um, here Strife Co. as the experienced players um, won't make the same mistake that some other players does. They come to a land and they're like, "What's the maximum amount of damage the rogue can put out?" and they try to play around that. I think that's not something we will see Strife Co. do. I think Strife Co. he will play very solid. He will say, "If I think this play has a higher win rate, then maybe I die if he has the perfect four card combo." But I'm just gonna take that chance because I know. The other play is the winning play. Um, Arson is all about chances. It's all every play has a good and a bad side, and if you have to choose between two plays, it's it's always difficult. And we see a pretty good hand from Strafkor, I would say. Yeah, um, it's decent. You have the Twilight Drake to start with. Malgan is lining up here. If you draw into white color, that's definitely nice. Yeah, and Frigga's hand is really not very good right now. Um, yeah, again, he's he's not drawing too good. He has to draw into a sprint to you make use of that preparation. But then again, if he does manage to draw the sprint, it becomes a really good hand very quickly. <laughs> that's the thing. But on the other hand, Strife Grow here with the Emperor Thorisan. And uh, that might also come in handy here because he has got a very high cost can, uh, very high cost hand. And first of all, Freaky goes for the three three buddy, the Earthen Ring Farcia. He yeah. doesn't give a. Uh, okay, now I have to say it. He doesn't give a shit about the heal. <laughs> <laughs> and Strikro on the other hand just counters that with a nice four eight Twilight Drake. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good solid play, kind of the try Drake here. If he saps it, you can just replay it again on curve. Um, if he doesn't doesn't sap it, you can just tap and play the dark bump as he drew into it. Um. But nice here for Freaky, you can go into backstab and then maybe preparation. You take a sharp sword oil, then take out the Twilight Drake with your weapon, and then play the SI7 agent. Or oh, that's a misplay in my opinion. If he does end up... No, he oh. he, he chooses to keep the prep. Okay. Um, yeah, he keeps the preparation. I, I, I actually really understand that play. I don't think you really want to play the prep at that point. It's like you put a big minion on it, but you're so far away from killing him. If you put him low, he's just going to drop those Molten Giants. Yeah, uh, he was also running into that Hellfire that was drawn by Strifegrow, so he could true. easily deal with 2-3-3 three, three or 6-3. Or, uh, but he gets the sprint, which is a huge draw at this point. Um, not Wait. think you're gonna play it quite yet. I think you're gonna play the low up here. But uh, but I think you're really happy to see the sprint because you were kind of running out of cards in your hand. I think so too. And as professional players, we can already think about the next turns. Because now setting up the low up is not only nice for this turn, but you put the body on the board and next turn with that zap, you have a nice follow up. You can't expect the demon lock to just play one minion on turn five which is gonna come up it's gonna be probably a sludge bash a lot that would not be cool but the next turn you go into preparation sprint draw a lot of cards draw your damage and over the time by doing that you already deal 10 damage with the lower thep and bring your opponent into that lethal range with all your cards and that sap is very crucial so here is a nice lineup but as we see strife grow has that lower thep and that's the perfect answer here to that play denying those couple of turns coming up and that's making it very awkward here for freaky yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, what's the best answer to low fab? Like, 90% of the time, it's your own low fab. Um, yeah, it's the same with Dr. Boom. <laughs> yeah. And, like, if Frigga had, like, the Emperor here, it would be amazing for him, but we can see that he unfortunately doesn't have it available in his hand. Um, so I think he will just have to attack phase here, we dagger, play the Falnas. The question is whether or not you choose to trade with the low fab. Yeah, that's a question here. Um, I don't see why you should trade as a rogue. You always, as a rogue, you want your buddy on the board to make use of that Tinker Sharp Sword Oil. But you also have to consider that Strife Crow's 5-5 five five is also a threat for you. And so maybe Freaky wants to be a bit safer here and takes out that uh, opponent's lower fab and will probably go for the Thalnos. You have to do the card of Thalnos here, right? I would have gone for the Falnas as well. Frick here disagrees. Um, gonna be a little bit rough for him when he sees the Emperor here. Because turn six, you can expect 
your opponent to play a big minion and not even to contest your blood match Thalnos, and now you want to tag that Emperor of Forest side out. And you don't have the two mana for Thalnos this turn for Thalnos and Inviscerate. Because I'm pretty sure with that preparation sprint, he's going to draw into an Inviscerate. Yeah, I know. And then having your spell power on the board is pretty important. So well, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You can just hit it with the dagger. Um, oh! And he might not even get the Invis. He does not get the Inviscerate. But anyways, if he had the Blood Mage Thalnos on board now, you could go for the backstep. Attack with your Thalnos and attack with your weapon. Draw another card and re-dagger. That's that not true. what we see here. So he's thinking about... Can he make him overdraw? Actually, how many cards are there? Two, four, six... It's just eight cards. So if you go for the Zap, the Demon Lock is not even going gonna burn a card and he can just play Thorison again and make his, heart, uh, his hand even, even more low cost. Yeah, I mean, like, you Zap it, but I'm pretty sure... Strafko is just going to replay it. You are not in danger of anything. Um, you, yeah, I, I'm 90% sure. Like, Dr. Boom is pretty appealing as well, um, definitely. And he, it looks like he does go for the Dr. Boom. Uh, I think it might be a little bit early safe to go for the Dr. Boom here. And the Taunt up. Um, like, it plays pretty heavily into, uh, into a blade for I would say. Um, but... However, Strafko is a, a, is a pretty good player, so I won't uh, question him too much here. Um, but I would have liked to see the, the replay of the Emperor. Yeah, and unfortunately for Freaky, he does not even have the answer in form of the Blade Flurry here, so... Uh, that's also an awkward turn. You can play your own Dr. Boom to counter that, but then you're a bit behind because the player that plays Dr. Boom first will have the advantage of attacking with it first and dealing the damage first. Yeah. So that's not really what, what Freaky wants to do here. Also, the Warlock deck has cards like Shadow Flame, um, so... But I, I don't see what other player you can go for here, except playing your own Dr. Boom. Well, first of all, Freaky attacks and then he goes for an Azure Drake if he draws into the Eviscerate now! Unfortunately, he doesn't, but... <laughs> but he draws into SI Agent, which also fits his Curve Knight. Yeah, uh, you can backstab well. the Sun Fury Protector and then deal clear with everything the last except bomb. Dr. Boom. But uh, yeah. unfortunately, that Dr. Boom is going to stick on the board, um, and uh, it's not looking very good for Fricky, I would say. And now with that 7 7. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I guess. Um. I mean, like, it makes sense. He's going to deal with the Dr. Boom one way or another. Um, if he SI agents the Boom Bot and it hits 4 or on the Acer Drake or 3 on the SI agents, it's pretty bad, but... Yeah, yeah, I agree on that point. You uh, have to deal with it, but... It still does not feel too good. No, it definitely doesn't feel too good. Um, now, Strifeco has a lot of options, so he's probably gonna take his time he does decide to and he oh. hits for three on the azure drake taking that out and he's not even smiling strife grows that <laughs> playing very clinically uh, yeah um, i know i think i know strife crow is uh, i think strife crow knows he's in a bad spot uh, matchup wise he still needs even if he wins this game he still needs to win with his paladin yeah which is going to be hard um but the comeback could happen um and there we go, finally, uh, Freaky draws into the Blade Flurry, and now he has to set it up somehow, I guess. But this turn does not really look like a good turn to set it up. He'll go for the Falnas, Tinga, Blade Flurry, I guess. Um, you don't clear the Asia, uh, the Triad Drake, but you do clear both the Dr. Boom and the Belcher. Yeah, I don't even see a way to, to take care of that Twilight Drake. To be honest, that is probably going to stick on the board. Yeah, um, I don't see it either. I, I don't see an I'll play the Blade Throwing here. I think if you don't Blade Throw, you're just going to die. So that's 8 mana. That's, that turn costs 8 mana. Nothing else for him to play. If he plays Dr. Boom, that's way too passive. He has to do something against that big board. You can't he leave. He could play the Ace of Drake and pray he got the second prep. Or an Eviscerate. Eviscerate will also take yeah. out something here. But, um, but you uh, can't can 
pray to RNGs Jesus like that. He so, does decide to go for the foul mouth. He does right. the number guy play, even <laughs> though he knows he will lose by doing that. <laughs> I mean, like, he's not dead yet. He's still in it. Um, and there we go. And That's now, a, this Strafko is very sick card. Strifecro is one of the only players playing that Red Inferno, and he yeah. made it popular again. And if you notice, Strifecro used the uh, one mana Sunfury Protector early on, and I think he would really much like to take it back right now. Play it here. Um, Unfortunately, he doesn't have that option. It looks like a pretty good Hellfire Molten Giant to me. Um, maybe he's a little bit scared of dying, so maybe he'll try and find a safer play. But uh, that's the play I see, the Hellfire Molten Giant. Hellfire Molten, as already we have seen one Tinker Sharp Sword Oil being played. Uh, two Eviscerates are left, though. Yeah. We know that. We have one... And another sharp sword oil available, and now it comes if to the point. If he plays two sh shafts, uh, two oils, because he plays Dr. Boom, and many lists that play Dr. Boom doesn't play two oils. That's another point. But earlier you mentioned Strife Crow is maybe not some of uh, one of those players who plays around maximum damage. He rather takes the chances and thinks about, okay, what is possible for my opponent? What is likely that he has in the hand? And so, Definitely. even though the Hellfire play seems a bit risky here to the players, Strifecrow is calculating it all through and decides for himself that he is healthy enough to go for the Hellfire and then plays Emperor of Thorazan okay. because he just wants to make his hand even cheaper. Yeah, I think maybe I'd gone for the Molten for more pressure, but then again, the Molten will come for even cheaper later on, so... Um. Yeah, and I feel like it doesn't really matter because now you put your opponent into lethal range as well exactly. by what you're representing on the board. But if he had, like, a fan of knives, it, he actually wouldn't have lethal just with the 5-5 the five five body, but he would with the 8-8. Eight eight. Also, he can pretty much safely uh, sap the Emperor here. Where if you played Molten Giants, it would feel so terrible to sap it because as it a Drake, just it all comes down, down to this draw. It's another Blade Flurry, and that's not really helping him here. Well, he can survive, so I guess it's something. You know, I called you on stream. I called you the survival monster. <laughs> I called you. You are the survival guy. You're because you were always in a bad spot. Sorry about that, but that's <laughs> RNG is not good to you today. But you managed to survive so much, and so it's now coming again to the point where you can tell us how to survive the best. Obviously, taking that Azure Drake out with the Blade Flurry, uh, Freaky is left with 7 HP. And oh, whoa! and that's lethal. That's lethal here. Lord Jaraxxus. Coming up, Strafko setting the record 2-2-2 two to two right now. 2-2-2. Two to two. And we talked about it. Now it also comes to those mind games. It comes to the, to who player, which player is nervous and which player you know? is not nervous. Yeah, I mean, like Frigga doesn't have that much experience. Maybe he's tilting a little bit. He's definitely on a losing spree. He definitely doesn't feel too good. Like um, Rogue versus Warlock. I think the Warlock is favored, but I don't think it's like a, I don't think the Warlock is a huge favor. So Frigga might be a little bit annoyed. He lost that. Also, um, the Paladin can definitely win. I mean, it's Hearthstone and uh, it's definitely a bad matchup for the Paladin, but uh, I've been on the Rogue side and lost that matchup many times. I've been on the Paladin side and wa lo uh, did not lose that matchup many times. <laughs> I won it many times because it's definitely uh, possible here to, to win that for the Paladin. And I've been talking to, to some French pro players uh, recently, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was talking to them about exactly that matchup, and many people say it's like a 70-30 for the Rogue, but then he came up, it was Best Marmot, I think, he came up with, uh, no, listen to me, it's a 55-45 for the Rogue. I, I wasn't really believing that, but somehow it can work out. If you draw into that Loathub, if you draw into your Harrison Jones, if you have some early game, you can definitely survive, and it also comes down to those crucial cards, like when do you place your taunts, does your opponent waste his zaps? So it is possible here for Strife Crow to make the reverse kill, actually. Definitely. Uh, I mean, like, it wouldn't be the first time we see someone make a reverse trio, um, but uh, he will definitely need some good draws if he is going to do it. Yeah, this time uh, I... Pretty much like a Freaky's hand here. You do have the Violet Teacher, you do have a backstep for the early game if you want to. Earthling Farseer to heal up early. 
And, oh, okay, the second backstab makes it awkward because you don't want too much early game pressure. But no, but I think this second backstab is still okay. You're still gonna gonna play it. Yeah, against double shielded mini, mini butter. Yeah, that's, it's that's pretty easy. Good. <laughs> so I guess you dagger up here and then go for the backstab. Just take it out because you can, because you're cool, because you're freaky, because you're from Sweden. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So number guy just uh, thinks, okay, uh, who am I casting with here? <laughs> Snack guy crazy, and yes, I I am crazy. <laughs> So, Dagger yeah. Mastery attacks into, takes it out. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Strafko is going to play the second shielded minibot, and uh, we already know it's uh, gonna die to the another dagger hit, another backstab, and then he's gonna heal himself back up to 29. But the question is, is Freaky gonna go for coin into Violet Teacher to also make use of uh, that backstab and to create a Violet Apprentice? You, you can think about that. I don't think it's bad to use the Violet Teacher right now. You have some... Uh, when it becomes Freaky's turn, I think you get some guaranteed value out of the Violet Teacher, which is always nice. You get it out before he can get a, down True Silver. Like, there's no way for the Paladin to be killing it. Um, however, if you play the 4-drop now, then you want to play the other 4-drop on the next turn. When are you then going to play the 3-drop on turn 5? The 3-drop, it's a heal, so you can keep that. And I like the curve. Playing the 4-drop on turn 3, the Violet Teacher and the Paladin Shredder, it's not like the Earthen Ring Farseer is a crucial card in that matchup, so you, you can always keep that in your hand. No, it's definitely not a crucial card. Um. And I like that. I like that what you said. Keeping your Violet Teacher out of the True Silver range, that's very important because it's so annoying. And if you then draw into something like a uh, Preparation Whoa. Sprint, and that's another thing. Strife Crow goes for the 3-3 three, three body on the board with the Eldor Peacekeeper, and that's awkward to me. That's awkward. I would never do that. Yeah, I'm not really sure why he's doing that. Um... I mean, like, it kind of does the same thing, it's gonna die anyway. Uh, it dies to more or less the same things. I guess it dies to Deadly Poison as well, which maybe makes the play even weirder to me, but... Um... But for the Paladin, you have to survive. That's, that's the rule, you have to survive the aggression of the Rogue. And you need your Eldor Peacekeepers to deny the Rogue some damage. And I would say, even though Strife Crow is a more experienced player than me, probably, uh, I would criticize that play. I'm sorry, but... I mean, like, it's 3 damage instead of 2 damage, so maybe you could make some argument that it's more pressure, but I totally agree with you here. I, yeah. I think it's a little bit of a mistake from Starko's side. Also, the shielded minibot in the late game does not really make any sense. And but the Elder Peacekeeper in the late game is pretty good. That's the thing, but that Elder Peacekeeper has been wasted now. And now he's stuck here on turn 4. I expect to see the pilot of Shredder coming down to contest yeah. the Violet Teacher a bit. But, but once again, Strife Pro disagrees. Oh yeah, you can also go for the silence here if you're afraid that your opponent has a lot of spells in the hand. And wow, that Fed of Knives is actually pretty good here. I was thinking about already using the Blade Flurry, but the, those Blade Flurries are crucial. So, you want to keep them, but... Fan of Nice is a little bit off-curve. Like, it's definitely not bad, but I think I like to play the Pirate Sweater. Yeah, me too. Trade the 1-1 one, one into the Owl and then attack face with the... Right, that shield with Minibot is no big threat, I agree to that. So you can establish more on the board and just play that Pilot at Shredder. Strife Grow draws into an Emperor of Thorazen, though. Uh, but he does not have too many cards in the hand, so that is not even giving him too much value once he comes to play it. I mean, like, Starfro, they're even in cards, but he's behind in terms of the tempo, and when it's gonna be Frigga's turn, Frigga's actually also gonna be ahead uh, on card advantage by one card, uh, so I would definitely say that Starfro is in a really bad spot at the moment. Like, I... I, I 
I don't want to say the game is over just yet. Uh, lots of crazy things could, of course, happen, but it's yeah. And we also see Freaky dark. does not have too much damage in his hand. There's just a deadly poison, a blade flurry, and the Earthen Ring fast here. So he still has to draw his Tinker Sharp Sword, or if this rates, he still has to put on the pressure because once they get to the late game stages, the Paladin can draw into Sludge Belches, into Tyrion Fordring, and you have to deal with that as a rogue. And sometimes it's not easy, uh, not easy if your zaps are not coming in handy. Yeah, that's definitely right. Uh, that being said, I would much rather be, be the rogue at this spot than the paladin. Still, Strafgro goes for the trade, trades his divine shield into the sh uh, piloted shredder, then takes it out with the cockhammer and will probably go for reinforcement here with a, uh, with the silver hand recruit entering the board. Um, that's a pretty nice play, even though you could now go for the Fan of Knives and just use your Dagger Mastery if you wanted to. You could clear the board like that with a trade then with the Steam Wheel Sniper and draw another card, set up more tempo in your hand, set up for further turns. You also have Dr. Boom there. So I would really like to see the Fan of Knives here, even though sometimes you want to keep it to counter Master for Battle. Yeah, but this is not one of the times, since you already have Deadly Poison and Blade Fur in your hand, so you're not worried about Master for Battle at all. And there we go, he draws a zap, and that's a very great draw here. Definitely. Um, it looks like he's going to have a great next turn, and a great turn after that with the Dr. Boom, so... But now Emperor Thorson is is pretty nice to me. It looks good. You can take out that Steam Wheel Sniper here and It's good, but as we know it's just gonna die to the Deadly Poison and the two one and then Strife Crow will heal. No, himself. it's not gonna die to the two one because that is gonna get taken out by the cockhammer. Oh you're right. Um my bad. Uh but I would not suggest maybe well let's let's see what he draws. I guess he draws a preparation. Huh. You could go for, for you could put on the pressure here. Really, if you go for deadly poison, then blade flurry, and then heal up with, with the earthen ring farsia. That's so much pressure. You have the zap following that up, but that's a very aggressive play. It's a very aggressive play. Um, and I think the main reason why he goes for it is not necessarily that he likes the aggressive play. It's really there was just nothing else for him to do. That's that's it. You could have zapped the Emperor Thorson. No, you don't want to zap the Emperor Thorson. Now when there's down still again. two Beltias left and uh, Tyrion. one Tyrion. Yeah, that's the reason. Maybe also a Sylvanas that you want to zap at some point. And now with seven mana available, at least Drivecrow can play two of his cards in the hand. Without Emperor Thorson, this would have been a very awkward turn. So I expect to see the pilot a Treader in a combination with... True well, silver yeah, with the true silver, you have to play it like that. Yeah, I don't think there's any other way to play it. Um, Take out the Earthen Ring Farce here, have your pilot of Treader on the board. But once again, he's dropping down to 12 HP already, and by trading with the true silver champion, he will f uh, he will fall down to 11 HP. And if Freaky manages to draw into the Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, it is GG. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at this point, there's a lot of good draws for Freaky and Strafko basically needs to dodge all of them. And even that Dr. Boom, if it comes down on turn 7, it's uh, a bit slower play, but it establishes such a nice board position for Freaky, so he might be able to close it out in, in the next turn, so... Yeah, also even if uh, the Paladin has something like Equality Consecrate, the Boom Bots are still gonna deal damage to the Paladin's face, still gonna put him closer to that lethal range, um, so definitely expect the Dr. Boom to come down Yeah, here. me too. Azur Drake, not really an option here. You're you're putting your opponent in and such I a bad spot that you don't really think about hand cards now. And again, I don't expect Freaky to, to trade here. It just doesn't make any sense. If you trade, you just risk that there will pop a Doomsayer out of the Pilot Shredder. And Strife Grow is facing losing that match here. It is 2-2 now between the two players. And Strife Grow really on the line here. He is... Well, is there even anything he can do to survive? Yes, I think so. If you go for... The Defend of Argus and the Consecrate and the bombs hit you for... Well, you have another target with that 2-2 you get on the board with that Silver Hand Recruit. You go for that. 
taunt them both up. You can also clear the Violet Teacher with your weapon. So you have a full board clear. The question is, do you think you're lucky enough that you, uh, that you can soak up some damage by using the Consecration first and maybe hit on one, for one or two on the Pilot and Shredder? That's very risky, so I don't expect Strife Pro to go for that. I think when you're at 8 health, maybe you have to go for the risky play. Yeah. Sometimes... Okay, so let's see. Does he go for the Consecration first? Looks like it. He attacks it. into the Violet Teacher. Then goes for the Consecration mm. to... No! No. He trades first. He plays it safe. A yeah, I definitely Zappomatic can't fault him out. for that. Uh, I think I would have liked to see him be a little bit more greedy. But, wow! Uh, have you seen that? Three on the Defender of Argus and two on uh, on the Silver Hand recruit. And now with the uh, Azure Dragon also drawing into the SI7 agent. Wow, freaky. Really That's doing what Boombots can here. do to you. <laughs> Wow, crazy boom bots. And now we do have to take a sharp sword oil here with the zap and that game. Uh, I just call it now, it's it's over. It's over. That's definitely Freaky's victory here. I mean, like, it's not a one paper, but we know that Freaky has the the oil and the, that it is indeed over. So Strife Crow with we'll his last move here. He takes out the Azure Drake. We'll play his knife juggler. And then... So. Does Freaky go for the BM? That's the big question here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. I, I'm, Freaky doesn't strike me as the kind of player who go for the BM. He could even play an Eviscerate with just two damage. But he goes for preparation into Ticker's Sharp Sword Isle and... There yeah. we go. Doesn't go for the BM. Closing stages here. So that's the victory for Freaky here. Congratulations, Freaky, taking the victory Definitely. over Strife Girl. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the action. Thanks again to you, Number Guy, casting that game with me. And we will be right back with the next game of this group after a short break. So stay tuned, grab yourself some chips, uh, grab yourself a beer, and we will be right back. <laughs>